Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I am I'm going to ask you some questions. Why do people still buy these products? <laughs> so if you want to see what I mean by that, then just keep watching. Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all of the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. And I was going through the best sellers page on Sephora and Ulta and various other websites recently, just looking for some inspiration for videos. And I found myself looking at some of these best selling items that have literally been best sellers for years. And I'm quite shocked that people are still buying these products after all of this time. So we're gonna talk about those products. I'm also gonna give some alternatives as well of products that I personally think work better. They're not gonna be more affordable alternatives by any means, that's a whole separate video that I need to do one day. But just some things that I think work better and should be on the best sellers list in replacement of these items. Remember, if I talk about these items and you love them and they work for you, seriously, don't take it personal at all. These are just through my personal experiences. I know why they're best sellers. Clearly, I'm the one that's in the wrong. They're best sellers for a reason. They work for the majority of people. This video is all in good fun. Everybody's different. Everybody's makeup application and techniques are different. This is just stuff that I have experienced in my own personal life. So let's get into it. So, okay, this is one that I truly, truly do not understand how Tarte Shape Tape is still the number one bestseller at Ulta after all this time. I am a bit of a hypocrite, I suppose, because I do use Tarte Shape Tape in my makeup kit, but I use it because it's so full coverage, but I will never apply it on a client on its own. I mix it in with a more creamy concealer because that concealer makes me look ancient. It has from the beginning. I was so excited to try it years ago, and it makes my under eyes look textured, dry, crepey, and creasy, and while it does provide that full coverage that everyone was talking about, it aged me. And I've heard more people talk about it, you know, being a, a bit too dry, a bit too aging. The complaints that I made were quite similar, but it's still the number one bestseller at Ulta, so clearly I don't understand, but... The alternative that I think should be the number one bestseller, and this is still a very good product, it's still on the bestsellers list, but this should be number one in replacement of Tarte Shape Tape, in my personal opinion, the Too Faced Born This Way concealer. This maybe doesn't have quite as much coverage as the Tarte, but it still is very full coverage, and it's actually moisturizing under the eyes, it looks a little bit more skin-like. So everything that I don't like about the Tarte Shape Tape this has the opposite of it, and then everything that I like about the Tarte Shape Tape, this has that as well. So I know this is still a bestseller, but I just, I don't like Tarte Shape Tape personally, and I feel like this one is so much better, so I'm still shocked that Tarte Shape Tape is still like the number one bestseller. I have two liquid foundations that were on the bestsellers list that I, I people are still buying. So the first one is the original Fenty foundation. I believe it's called like the Soft Matte Foundation. And then the other one is the NARS Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation. So let me start off with the Fenty. I have never liked that foundation. I have dry skin to begin with, so that is part of it. it I felt as though it made my skin look very dry. It just didn't cater to my skin type. They did eventually come out with a more moisturizing and hydrating one. I didn't like that one either. I find Fenty as a brand overall to be very overrated. Fenty has done some great things in the industry and I think why that foundation has done so well is because they came out with so many shades and it hit the media quick, it was very highly talked about, and that was a fantastic thing in the makeup industry to happen. However, the actual product itself I didn't like, and I think sometimes how inclusive they are and the great things that they are doing get overshadowed by the fact that I don't find their products to be so great in the grand scheme of makeup and all that is on the market. And this NARS foundation, I never understood. Never, ever. From the beginning, it doesn't set down on my skin. It gets everywhere. It's drying. It's matte, even though it claims to be radiant. This is another foundation that I never understand. It just slips and slides all over my face. I still have it because I'll, from time to time, I'll mix it with a different foundation to kind of counteract the badness of it. But those are two foundations that are still on the bestsellers list 
and I just feel like there's so much better matte foundations. So a couple of the ones that I prefer to use, I really like the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Foundation. I don't love the way that this wears, but in terms of a full, full coverage foundation that doesn't have too much shine to it or glow to it, this looks so much better than <laughs> the other two that I mentioned. And this one is a more affordable alternative. The Catrice HD Liquid Coverage. This is one of my all-time favorite matte foundations. I think it is incredible and it's only just a few bucks it reminds me a lot of what the nars foundation does as far as coverage but it looks so much better i'm actually wearing a matte foundation as well this is my current favorite the guerlain high perfection foundation this has been my favorite matte foundation recently that i've tried it's like the Fenty in terms of coverage, it's very similar to that, but it just looks better. It looks more skin-like, it looks more smoothing, and it works better with my dry skin. So I have a lot of foundations, clearly, that I like better than those two. This makeup remover, I feel like, is so old. I... <laughs> I remember my mom using this. I've had this like little samples of it since I was a kid. I was shocked that it's a bestseller at Ulta, but the Lancome by Facil Double Action Remover. So this is a makeup remover and I still have a couple samples in my collection because I'll get them as samples and keep them to travel with and they remove makeup just fine but there's so many things I don't like about that makeup remover. I don't like the oil residue that it leaves behind on my skin and I find it to be very irritating to my eyes. For some reason when I use that makeup remover it just irritates my eyes and makes them hurt and my life was changed when I discovered the Garnier Micellar Cleansing Water. Make sure you get the one with the blue cap. This one gets rid of makeup the best. My eyes don't get irritated anymore and I don't have any residue left behind and there's been a lot of chatter in the makeup community about different kinds of makeup removers, different makeup remover cloths, so it really just surprised me that people are still buying that Lancome one. The next one I'm not so shocked by it being a bestseller, but I think makeup has improved a lot. So I'm, I am still shocked that Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder is still one of the best sellers, and I think it is just because that's what people have heard about. For a while, it was the only powder being used on the internet, but it's no secret that as years have gone on, makeup formulas have improved and makeup is just getting better and better. So while I think this powder is very nice, it's kind of just a nondescript powder. It sets your makeup and that's kind of all it does. Some powders that I like better than the Laura Mercier, I really like the Huda Beauty Easy Bake Loose Setting Powder. Now those aren't similar, but that's just a powder that I feel like is more smoothing to my skin. Something that's more similar that I prefer to the Laura Mercier is a Too Faced Born This Way setting powder. I just think there's powders that work better now than the Laura Mercier and the Laura Mercier is not bad it's there's so many powders out there and that one is still a bestseller this one I'm totally a hypocrite because I definitely still own it and I definitely still use it regularly and I guess I'm not so shocked that it's a bestseller but I'm shocked that it's one of the number one bestsellers which is the ABH Brow Wiz and it is a great product. I love it and when they have it on sale for 50% off, I will buy it. But that's the catch. I will not pay full price for an ABH Brow Wiz when e.l.f. comes out with a brow pencil that's $3 and Colourpop has one for $6. That is almost virtually the same. I do think ABH has a leg up in the quality of the pencil, but not enough to justify the price. So while I still do love my ABH, I think even NYX has a really great one. The drugstore has not come to play with their brow pencils, so while ABH's quality is great, the only reason why I'm shocked that it's still such a high bestseller is because the more affordable options really give the ABA to run for their money. As you can see, this is a no order, so just, yeah. So in the next one that we have, everybody knows that the Urban Decay Naked Palettes are best sellers always, and I'm personally never moved by the Naked Palettes. I was before I had gotten seriously into makeup, so I'm assuming that's why it does so well. But I'm here to tell you if you're into the Urban Decay Naked Palettes, the quality is like, it's okay. 
you know? I did just recently order the Wild West, so maybe my opinion will change. It's been so long since I've purchased a Naked palette, but the color stories are so uninspiring. That's why I haven't bought them in the past, and even the Wild West I didn't want to buy. It's for a different video that I bought it. A brand that I think is at a similar price point and just does it better, continues to amaze me with their formula and their color stories is Nabla Cosmetics. Now I know it's not very similar to Urban Decay, but I was thinking in terms of price point um, and originality. So let's think of the Urban Decay Naked palette, okay? Great colors, the original one, even the reloaded one. The Nabla one, this one is a side-by-side -side palette. This has to be better. The formulation is amazing. Nabla was not on the best sellers list of Ulta, which is where they are sold. And Urban Decay, naked palette after naked palette. But the novel formulas, this is the dreamy palette. What a beautiful color story. The cutie palette, they even have minis just like Urban Decay. I suppose I can't speak from much experience because I don't buy the naked palettes, but the Nabla Cosmetics has such an amazing formula. Their color stories are better and they're at the same price point. So maybe my opinion will change after I try the Wild West palette, but I cannot believe Urban Decay is still going with this naked palette theme and people are still buying it and that they're still on the best sellers. Eyeshadows have evolved so much and I feel like Urban Decay isn't one of those brands that has evolved with the change. This was on the best sellers list of Ulta and I seriously didn't even know people were still buying them. Kylie Cosmetics Liquid Lipsticks. And I still have a ton. So I fell for it too, back in the day. I did, you see all of these? I fell for it, I honestly should declutter those. The colors of Kylie Cosmetics Liquid Lipsticks Phenomenal. Not gonna take that away. They have amazing colors, amazing wearable colors, amazing not so wearable colors. Just a great range overall. But man, do they dry out my lips. I feel like liquid lipsticks are coming back because of the mask situation, but the Kylie formula I was shocked to see was a best selling formula because they make my lips look liney and uncomfortable. So the first layer that I put on is fine, but when you reapply Kylie's liquid lipsticks, it is not good. Your lips start to crack and get disgusting. Some of my favorite liquid lipsticks formulas, first of all, you should go for velvet liquid lipsticks because those are much more comfortable. But as far as matte matte, I think Ofra has a really great one. I think Girl Lactic has a really great formula. So if you're looking for more comfortable liquid lipsticks, look more into those brands. Or Joseph Colors also has a really nice one. But I went through the craze of Kylie liquid lipsticks and this was when liquid lipsticks were very, very popular. And then I realized I hated them. So yeah. <laughs> Ooh, here's another one. I hope nobody gets mad, but the Fenty matchsticks were on the best sellers page of Sephora, and I was like, why? Those are so dry, and they don't blend out. I don't have mine anymore. Um, the one thing that those do have is the color range is so unique, and they claim that it has versatility. It doesn't. It's so dry. A, a cream stick product that I really love and I can fully endorse is Nude Sticks. Nude Sticks doesn't have as cool of colors maybe as Fenty, but they actually work and they blend out. Milk Makeup also is another good one, but I really love the colors in the Nude Sticks range. So, you know, they have their... This one has a bit of a glow to it. This is Cherry Blossom. Their bronzer stick, Bondi Bay, is an incredible neutral brown. And they have a lot of other colors, a lot of other finishes. Their brand is called Nude Sticks. Things come in sticks from that brand. And they actually work and they blend out and they look really great and they're well thought out colors. So yeah, I don't think Nude Sticks gets enough credit, okay? If the Fenty Cream Sticks or Match Sticks are a bestseller, then Nude Sticks should definitely be as well. Because that's like so much better. <laughs> Some of these are so funny to me. The Too Faced Lip Injection. Now, I know why they're on the best sellers, because they like give your lips an allergic reaction, and it's very, very painful. I, I bought it before, and yeah, it works. It hurts. Why are we putting ourselves through that? Because it doesn't give that much of a plump. So I was thinking, I don't really like lip plumpers in general, so I don't necessarily have an alternative for you. But I was just talking about the Dior Lip Maximizers. These have a very subtle cooling sensation to them that do have a slight plumping effect. Like this I can get down with, because the gloss, it does plump your lips and you can feel the cooling sensation, but it's not literally painful, like the Too Faced. So we're still suffering through that when in reality, a gloss and then a little bit of lip contour with like a light brown shade is all you need. 
okay? It does much more than that plumping gloss oil. And then, of course, on the Ulta bestsellers page, I saw a lot of Morphe palettes, and hypocrite here i'm having a lot of hypocritical moments sometimes i do love picking up a good morphe palette i'm not gonna lie i don't think their quality is that bad sometimes it can be but sometimes it's not but i did want to bring some attention to bh cosmetics because bh cosmetics deserves to be on the best sellers list of ulta they have the same price point as morphe sometimes cheaper and 10 times better quality i don't know how bh does it but their quality is so great their makeup has great themes great color stories, great quality, and I just think they do it better than Morphe, and they were compared a lot back in the day, maybe not so much anymore, but BH Cosmetics eyeshadows are better. I've also heard, I only have one palette, but a lot of people also prefer the Profusion palettes, and these are really nice. Honestly, with the one that I have, I feel like it's the same quality as Morphe palettes, but I, I see why Morphe palettes are best sellers. You get a lot of colors for an affordable price. I think I was just shocked as to why people still bought them when BH does it so much better. Last one. This one was on the Sephora bestsellers. <laughs> I never understood it. It was very, very hyped up back in the day, so I knew why it was a bestseller back then, but people have stopped talking about it since, so I'm still shocked that it is still a part of the bestsellers list on Sephora, and that is the Hourglass Vanish Foundation Stick. This has way too much coverage, it is way too cakey, and it looks horrible on my skin. You literally only need like a touch of it to make it look okay but still I just never understood this and I still don't know why it is a bestseller when Tom Ford has an amazing foundation stick. So the Tom Ford Traceless Foundation Stick is much more wearable. It has a little bit more natural coverage and more of a natural finish which some people love the Hourglass because of how full coverage it is but are we still even doing full full coverage foundation anymore? I I don't know why people are still buying this. It's not very good. I like this foundation when I mix it with a really lightweight product to kind of even it out and make it less cakey, make it a little bit more glowy. But yeah, I'm still shocked that this is a bestseller. I bought it like last year, so I guess it's still kind of a new purchase for me, but I bought it after years of hearing about it. Why is my hair so, ugh. I bought it after years of hearing about it, and I was like, oh. And now I'm especially like, people are so buying this, I don't hear anybody talk about it anymore because it's not very good. Okay, anyways, that is all I have for today's video. I hope you enjoyed my little rantiness. I love looking through the best sellers, and I'm tired of seeing these particular products taking up the place of other products that I personally feel are better. But please remember, again, this video is all in good fun. If you love these products, that's amazing for you. I am on the outside because... Obviously, these are on the bestsellers list for a reason, and they've been for a while. So that means they are cult favorites for a lot of you. So I hope you guys enjoyed that, and let me know if you try out any of the alternatives, and let me know what you think. If you guys aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys. And this is a more, of, uh, and this one is a more alternative. So I have two matte foundations that, I have two foundations 